Please do have a seat. A very warm welcome to the University of Aberdeen Carroll Service in this beautiful cathedral. I just wanted to first of all express a few thank yous for all those involved in making this service happen today. To Gillian Cursiter and all our chaplaincy ushers, to the cathedral staff and the bell ringers, those of you who are reading for us tonight or leading us in prayer, to Andrew Morrison for playing the organ, and of course, our director of chapel and ceremonial music, Stuart Muir, and our wonderful chapel choir. And tonight, we have a piece of music composed by one of our choir members and PhD student in composition. And a very special thank you to all of you for ice skating your way here tonight. Without you all making that effort, the service just wouldn't happen, so thank you. We gather together from across this university community, students, staff, and alumni. We gather together from across this city, Shire, and indeed across the world. Today, more than ever, it takes faith beyond imagining to come and hear the story we are about to share, especially when we are all living things too difficult to be made sense of by an ancient memory of angels and wise men. It takes faith beyond imagining to come and hear the story we are about to share when we feel that it would be a greater miracle than any virgin birth for love to be born right now in our world. The words we will sing and hear tonight are not to drown out the world's truths or to deny them, but to pray that they will hold us in their faith, bring light to our paths and remind us that love is already present and with us all in our world today. So we gather together the bewildered and brokenhearted, the fragile and the hopeful, the faithful and the faithless, because all we have left when we stand in the world's darkness is this longing for love to be born once again. Reverend Sarah Brown is going to open our time together in prayer. Follow the star and look for the light. Discover the birth of hope and the promise of life. Walk the way of this old story and be surprised as love finds you again. Thank you. 
It came from nothing but love. Out of nothing, God called all things to be, things beyond our imagining, the grandeur and mystery of the universe, its stretching back in time and its reaching out in space, the miracle of life on Earth, the mysterious creation of living beings, the eternal cycle of life and death, the countless emergence of new out of old, the infinity of different creatures, each unique in its own way, each fitting into its own niche and all dependent on one another. God's spirit dwells in it all, each second, minute, hour of every day. Creation's elements of sight and sound. Transparency through which God's light is seen. It came from nothing but love. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
his authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him 
the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Now in that same part of the country was a puckly shepherd biding out in the hill and keeping watch over their flock at night. And lo, all of a sudden, an angel of the Lord appeared, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And oh me, 
they were half afeard. But the angel comforted them. No need to be frightened at all. I bring you good news. News of Uncle Joy for Abdi in the world. As day in David's tomb of Bethlehem, a saviour has been born to you, Christ the Lord. And the wild is you'll find the bairnie in a bear, sweet and raw clutes, and lying in a boxy for feeding the nout. Sign in a glyph, a great muckle throng of the armies of heaven were made manifest aside the angel, giving laud and praise to God and proclaiming, Glory to God in the hacht of heaven, and on the earth peace, good will to Abdi. When the angels vanished awa back to heaven, the shepherds had a recht clake among one another and a greet. Recht enough. We'll need to get our boy to Bethlehem and see if it is our boot. See if it the Lord's trying to tell us. So, off the set, can I been out to Bethlehem, and they did find Mary and Joseph there, and the newborn Bernie lying in his manger. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, 
and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure tress, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him 
not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who receive him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth.
Let's respond to all that we have heard and sung by praying together now. God of love, whose spirit breathes life into the formless void of darkness, and whose word brings light to all people, we give you thanks for the love that connects us with each other and to all of creation, the love that brings meaning to our lives. As we remember past Christmases, we give thanks for the experiences of this year that is drawing to a close, for new friends and new learning, for all that has remained familiar and unchanging in our lives, for the people who have rejoiced with us and those who have helped us through hard times. They have reminded us that even darkness is not dark to you, and we give you thanks. As we anticipate the coming weeks, we bring before you our hopes. Hopes for peace, where the world is marred by violence. Hopes for justice, where the world is oppressed by wealth and vested interests. In this season of celebration, we bring our hopes for people who find themselves sick, alone, or in poverty. And we bring our hopes for family and friends as we negotiate the competing calls that their love places on our lives. In all of this, God of love, we bring ourselves, hastening with the shepherds as we hear the good news, kneeling with the wise men in awe of God in human form, wondering with Mary where your call on our hearts will lead us. May we be shaped by your life and light as we bring our prayers to you in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Christ, the giver of light and love, shine upon you now, scatter the darkness from before your path, and may you all be reminded that love is already here. And may the blessing of creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you now and all those whom you love. Amen.